making predictions of a linear relationship lesson 5.3b. We can use an equation of a linear relationship to predict a value between data points that we already know. By finding the equation, we can substitute any x value into the equation to find the y value. So here we have an equation in slope-intercept form. We'll be able to write our equation with the slope and the y-intercept b and substitute any value for x to find y. So here's a real quick example. We have our equation in slope-intercept form and we write our equation. We look at this graph, this is the given graph, and we use the rise and the run to find the slope. That's the fast way. And we can choose any two points. We can see that each of the y values change by 10, and each of these little lines, grid lines, is 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can use 130, and we can use 350, and we can see that the rise is 20 over the run of 2. 20 over 2 simplifies to 10. We quickly find the slope that way. We can also just look at the graph and see that it goes through 20 on the y-axis. That's our b value, our y-intercept b. And we just substitute any value for x to find y. If we let x equal 2 and 2 tenths, we just substitute that into our equation, and we know that y is equal to 42. So let me walk you through this, showing using the slope formula or just this way, and I'll go into more detail. Let's first take a look at the graph and see what they're showing us. We have our x-axis, our y-axis. We can see that x is time in hours, and the scale is going by ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we can see the y-axis is distance in miles, and it seems to be skip counting by 40. It says, the graph shows the distance Jim drives over time. Predict the distance he'll travel in three and five tenths hours, three and a half hours. So we can see the hours are in whole numbers. They want three and a half hours in between this three and four. So we find the slope and y intercept to write the equation of the graph. We find the slope as 120 over two. We've got increments of 40, don't we? If we use these two points, we're going to have 40, 80, 120 for our rise, and we're going to have 2 for our run. And when we simplify that, we get 60. We know the slope is 60. We can look at the graph and see that it's intersecting the y-axis at 0. So b is equal to 0. We need to know 3 and a half hours. We substitute 3 and a half for x. We do 60, the slope, times that x value, 3 and a half, we get 210, and we know that y is equal to 210 miles. That means Jim will drive 210 miles in three and a half hours. Okay, for this one, let's use the slope formula to find the slope, and let's use inverse operations, additive inverses, to find the y-intercept b. It says the graph shows the diameter of the trunk of a tree over years. So here we have our years for our x value and the diameter in inches for our y value. Predict the diameter at 42 years. So we can see the years are given in increments of 10. We've got to find 42 years right here. So to find the slope, we use two ordered pairs and the slope formula. So we can use... 40 for x and 15 for y, and we could use 60 for x and 20 for y. We do the y sub 2 value minus the y sub 1 value, so we have 20 minus 15. That's the second y minus the first y of the ordered pairs. That gives us a 5. And when we do the second x value minus the first x value, we get 20. Our slope is 5 twentieths, which simplifies to 1 fourth. So now we have our slope, m. Now we find the y-intercept, b. We use one of the ordered pairs and substitute the values into an equation in slope-intercept form with our newfound slope. We're going to have 40 for x and 15 for y. If we do 1 fourth times 40, well, that's equal to 10. Now, 
we subtract the 10 from both sides of the equation to isolate b to one side of the equation. By doing a positive 10 plus a negative 10, we make a zero pair. And on this side, when we subtract 10, we get a 5. We've now isolated b by itself, and we know that it's equal to 5. Now we use this 5 in our equation. We're going to find 42 years, so we substitute 42 for x, and we have our y-intercept b plus 5. We do the equation. 1 fourth times 42 is 10.5. We add the 5. We get 15.5 inches for y. We know the diameter of the trunk will be 15.5 inches in 42 years. Now, if any of this was confusing, you probably missed some previous lessons. You can go back and watch the lessons of 5.2 and the one before this, 5.3a, and that'll really help you. Here we have another one where we're just going to count the rise over the run on the graph for our slope. So the graph shows the quantity of bird seed in pounds that birds consumed in weeks. Predict the pounds of bird seed that is eaten in eight weeks. So here is the time in weeks. We need to find this point way over here, and we're given a 0, 4, and a 5, 7 as our ordered pairs. Well, we can just count 1, 2, 3 for our rise and 5 for our run. We know the slope is 3 fifths. We can just look at the graph and see that the line is going through 4 on the y-axis, so we know our y-intercept b is 4. Now we have our equation. y is equal to 3 fifths x plus 4. We just substitute 8 for the weeks. For x, we do 3 fifths times 8, and we get 4 and 4 fifths. Now we add the 4 for the y-intercept b to that, and we get 8 and 4 fifths. That means y is equal to 8 and 4 fifths, so we know 8 and 4 fifths pounds will be eaten in 8 weeks. And we can use this equation to find any quantity of birdseed consumed over any number of weeks. We can even find it over 150 weeks, how much birdseed will be eaten, any number. We can use any two points on a graph to find the slope for an equation in slope-intercept form. Look at all the points that were given here. We can choose any two of these points to find the slope. But for accuracy, we use points that are located at the intersection of grid lines for the x and y values. We wouldn't want to use a point that's in the middle of one of these square units. Some points will be more sensible to use. Points farther from each other will involve greater numbers. If we use this point and this point, well, we're going to have a negative 600 for our rise over a 3 for our run, which needs to be reduced. If we use two points that are very close together, we get negative 200 over 1. That's easier. We don't need to reduce it, and we can go on. So if we chose this point and this point, that would be good. They're very close to each other, and our slope will be easy, and we won't have to reduce so much. But if we used like this point and this point, we're going to have a lot of reducing to use when we subtract. So it's better to use points that are closer together and that crisscross on the grid lines. Whether we're given a graph or a table, we can find the slope and y-intercept b to write an equation in slope-intercept form. Then we can substitute any value of x to solve the equation for y. If we know that y is equal to 2x plus 3 is our equation, we can put any value for x to find the value of y. An infinite number of possibilities. We're finished with 5.3b, and we're moving on to the last part of the lesson, contrasting linear and nonlinear data. We're going to learn about bivariate data. I really hope for those of you who have been watching every video in this playlist, that you've been watching Module 5 and by now are saying, I already understand this. This is easy. I get it already. Hopefully that's how you're thinking. I really want to make sure you understand, and I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.